In this video, we're going to look at our day six of our Tasmanian trip. It started from the highly recommended Commandy Hotel at Port Huon, and we make our way up to Ross, a town that we hadn't visited before. Now, Tony really loved this day's riding, which was a mixture of mainly dirt roads and, of course, bitumen. I liked totally bypassing Hobart. Why Ross? Because it's one of the finest heritage villages in Australia. Convict built, fascinating 1836 built historic bridge, colonial sandstone buildings, convict history and great bakeries. Yeah, we just met Daryl for coffee. Huonville at the cafe, it was DS Cafe, it was very good coffee there. Much better looking day today. Yesterday and the day before was rain. So we've got a couple of Ks of bitumen and then it progresses to the, the by roads unsealed section. Huon River. I thought the logging trucks weren't supposed to be running today uh, on holidays, but some must be running. They're not, not as if they're all not. So the beauty of this is we totally bypass Hobart. And the road itself has been very good. The surface has been good, snake dead started the uh, dirt section now and that's 3.9 kilometers from where it meets up with the Plenty Link Road. The sun's coming out, it's been a cold morning, 15 degrees or less. Yeah, there's the Huon River. Well, this is good, I'm not getting dust, it's a change surface is just very hard packed what clay fine bit of very fine gravel in some spaces yep yeah well that road we're on was pretty good you know, this one's a hard packed gravel road with the little stones So we're just winding up the mountain. It's uh, corrugated a bit and a little rocky, but no problem at all. It's, cor yeah, it's always corrugated on corners. Big decline now. We've climbed for about five or six k's. We just passed a logging truck and he came around this corner pretty quick. It wasn't real wide. This is a nice area to ride through, yeah. Oh, you know, the canopy type. Oh, here's another one. Yep. This one didn't slow down. A little wallaby. So a few of these hairpins are got some patchy ceiling. Bitumen. With the surprise of a bit of bitumen, we rode straight past Mugara Road to the left and continued along Plenty Valley Road. We're getting close to a, one of our left hand turns now, the Lenora Road, although it's still 8.9 kilometres. Looks like this is a bit of a, a bit of a suburb or something. How do you get on moving out here? There's no service at all. This is a nice windy road now, so you get the bit of a windy bitumen as well. Yeah, it's really nice down here. This Lyle Highway is good everywhere. It's the first time we've done this section of the Lyle Highway, um, this side of Oose. 
just going through Oos and it looks like we turn right here yep that would be it and how do you say this Watamana power station it's 32k yeah it's a nice countryside out here this road is a good road as well like it's um got some good white twists and that everywhere you look Beautiful. Okay, so we just started the dirt, and in 15 k's we're turning right on, right on Bashan Road. This is the first bit of the gravel, and looks pretty smooth. Wondered how long that beautiful bitumen was going to go for. Very good riding. The rain yesterday must have washed off a little bit of the dust so we've only got a tiny bit of dust today which is great yeah not so pretty as it was before when you're in the bushy area but you know you can't have it all yeah there was just a bit of a, a Y piece in the road we took the left um, it was good to recover because when Tony took the right she was out there was a, a bit of road that she could come back to this one so that was good um, but it was confusing because it looked like the right way was the way, more important way to go. The trees have got a bit of a fragrance here. A few houses around. And some of them have interesting things on them. Like an old, old, old caravan and things like that. So the road quality has been really good so far. The worst bit of it is a little bit of corrugation. That's as bad as it gets. So this route is part of the by roads route which will eventually take us up to Ross We're heading right now to the uh, to Arthur's Roadhouse and that'll be our lunch stop for today you see where the road has been graded but not for a while We're still climbing here what a mana the correct way to go. It's just it's reaching the top. You can see the road winding around the edge of the tree line here. So this is nice and fresh here through the trees. Beautiful riding actually. It's 18 degrees now and the sun's out and the sky is blue. How good is that? right behind you where's the echidna on the middle of the road is it There's the uh, power station, I'd say, right over there, to the right. All of these windmills in front. And the big valley. Gee, the scent of the trees is so strong. It's like mint. It's pretty good how this wraps around the edges of the mountain with the valley down the middle it's great look at that the bridge down here yeah we're going to cross that a heavy vehicle detour to the left and we go straight across oh wow well, we I might go onto the causeway and shoot a photo of you Tony Did I just miss it? I'm not sure if I missed it. No, I didn't.
<laughs> Where are you? Continuing after the bridge, the road becomes Water Main Road. We bypassed the power station, but did stop at Penstock Lagoon. This isn't the way you're supposed to walk up here, but it doesn't matter. Oh. Hey. This lagoon was constructed in 1916 to service the now decommissioned power station. But now it's used for camping and recreational fishing. So we saw, saw five fishing boats out in the lake and um, here's the camping area. A gate there. Lake 12. Ah, uh, there's a lake. It's only 200 metres to the roadhouse, which could be over there on the right. Here it is on the right, yep. In between them. So this was lunch. Always good to support these small town or village businesses. Uh, we're, we're on Interlaken Road and we're cutting across the coast for 40 odd kilometres, 45 kilometres maybe, before we head up, make a left and head to Ross. It's interesting how the water is running into the little creek line there, out of the, out of the bush area. But, um, yeah, it's a good surface. You can sort of motor along at a reasonable speed. Had three cars go the other way. Nothing terribly flash about the scenery. Well, there's a big mass of water to the right. I don't know what that actually is. Taking some trees out here. A lot of water from the last couple of days, I reckon. On the edges of the road there seem to have dug these trenches. Hmm. So we're getting heading towards Oatlands, and there's that massive water that we could see before. Got um, on our right, there's wetlands, Got some green. Gee, ducks, there's some ducks there. So this is actually into Lake Inn. Yeah, we're up high. It's a couple of switchbacks. Where we're going to come out of that like we've got 14 kilometers before we get off this road the that land looks closer than 14 kilometers mm, nice through there and it's like these ultra wide switchbacks <laughs> it's been quite steep coming down here not tight it's funny you know we're up with the lakes and then we descend for a considerable amount of time. The lakes must be high.
turns out that Ross is a really beautiful place to stay. We arrived early enough to walk around and explore the town. Amazingly, we arrived at the Ross Female Convict Station when it was supposed to be closed, but the lady there said to us, take another half an hour or so and she'll come back and lock it up later, and we did. Plenty of sandstone, churches, houses, the beautiful old bridge, a lovely sunset, and two great bakeries, and I think I had the best scallop pie I've ever eaten at Bakery 31.